think one of the things that we as fans have learned over the past year and a half is that you guys didn't always live the glamorous life. You didn't. You weren't making make millions of dollars, even though the videos look rich. And I think it's been a real eye opener for us to to say, wow, it's it wasn't all that great. I mean, because the videos and the music always gives us an image of happiness and like, wow, look at these guys. We shocked when we saw TLC and like, well, what's going on? How could they be broke? But I think we're hearing more and more of this. But before we get there, though, I, I guess everyone would say, okay, you, you're part of the, is it the Diva Girls, you said? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And then that, that sort of didn't work. And then how did Taj and Coco sort of pop in into your life? <sighs> well, uh, the, the short version, um, I, it was just as simple as me calling uh, Cheryl Coco to and ask her, yo, you want to join, you want to do a group? Oh, but you know? did you know her for something before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I've known her for a long time. So um, it was just that simple. You want to start a group and she didn't think I was serious about it. And she's like, ah, you call me back when you're serious. I, I was serious. So um, I don't know if it's because I had the kids. She didn't think I was serious. Oh, but, okay. But um, actually, I only had one kid. When I when I asked her this, I, you know what? The group was started. We started singing together before I had the kids. Wow. Yeah. So they they've seen a lot. <laughs> 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 but I can't give you everything because you have to save something for the biopic yeah you know definitely 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 no understandable but but so you grew up close to cheryl or coco and, and what about Taj? was she also in the, the close by yeah she was actually um she was uh cheryl's friend okay and a friend of cheryl's her name was amy and um they actually found Taj. From Brooklyn, yeah. Okay. Was it the intention just to have three people? Or did you not want four like in Vogue? Or did you, what was... There's a whole story. <laughs> we were so many different names. We were um, the Four Shades of Rhythm. We were, and that, that was four of us. Okay, it's four. And we went from four, like three, probably two or three sets of four different groups with different names. And... Um, once we was like really, really serious and working with a real producer in a real studio, we named ourselves TLC. Uh-huh. That didn't turn out right. <laughs> I mean, we got to cease and desist so fast. You, know, <laughs> you will not be that name. So, um, you know, so, and if anybody don't know, like those are our initials. Whether you say Lillian Coco, Joe, like those were really our issues. So um, yeah, so we kind of landed with Sisters with Voices, SWV. Uh, the, uh, whose idea was it? Our manager at the time, Maureen Singleton. What did you think of the name? Terrible. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that name sounded so dumb. It sounded. <laughs> me today sister voices like it sounds like it sounds how it sounded to us back then like like a choir or <laughs> yeah 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 organization or something like <laughs> so I think swv definitely have more swag to it <laughs> whose idea was it to switch it to swv i think it was ours it's just something that kind of happened because BBD was out, we was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. UB. Yeah, so, um, you know, things just happen, like, so spontaneously, but, yeah. One of the things that we've all learned um, is about talented artists get signed, um, a lawyer shows up with a contract, and it's like, oh, that's, that's good, you sign off, and then you just go ahead and think. And then, there are, you know, and of course, we're learning that um, we're learning that, that how you can sign off it away everything without recognizing until later on. How was it for you guys? Were you just, you know, so excited when you, you got 
the opportunity with RCA that that you didn't even, you know, did your lawyer was, did you have a good lawyer to support you and explain the ins and outs? <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that excited. Yeah, we were excited. And we were just young. We didn't know the questions to ask. We had adult people working with us. So when you're young, you just know to respect the adults. You know, they know a little more and they're going to take care of you. But it doesn't happen when in the music business. You know, it's almost like a lot of people want you to be dumb. They want you to be stupid. They don't want you to be because as soon as you get smart, you become a problem. That's what I mean, Heron, yeah. Become difficult. You ask one question, it's like, oh, she's on my shit now, you know, let me get rid of her. Wow. And then all crazy rumors start and nobody like you anymore. But as long as you shut up and you're quiet and, and you're dumb, oh, yeah, they love it. Wow. <laughs> but um, we just didn't have the knowledge. We didn't have the people to kind of usher us into the situation and teach us. We didn't have teachers. We had a lot of people that just kind of ate off of us. Wow. And we learned by trial and error. So is that when, because you said being on the road was lonely, but at that point when you're on the road and having to do promotional tours, the was it the hardest part before you know the album is out? Is that is that the hardest part? Or even after the album's out and everyone knows you? Oh, my gosh. It's so funny that you asked me that because I think of how these artists are today and how disrespectful they are to artists like us, like the older seasoned artists, and they be so quick to say old school. And that's fine. But I, I, I look at that now as a badge of honor because it's great. That means that I've been here before. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a certain level of respect for that, but they have, they've not even built to do the legwork that we've done. This was before social media. We had to sit down at a chair. We had what they would call a promo day mm -hmm. where we probably get to eat twice. We sit down at a table and we around a whole bunch of media doing interviews, interviews, interviews. I mean, sometimes you do like 50 interviews in one day. Wow. And just sitting there, some of them are phoners, some of them are, are live, you know, but it's yeah. not like this, it's more of their present. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of these artists are not built to do that. Yeah. You know, so absolutely. Like it, it was a lot tougher back then. Did you question the choices you made or were you still like, this is my dream, Apollo, I'm ready for you, Sandman. What, what, what kept you saying, I'm not going to stop? You mean at, at what point? Those early days, because as I said, that doesn't sound fun sitting down. And I, and I know I've heard from Uptown when they were telling me that back in the days, you had promo tours, radios, you had to go do all this stuff and, and said from bus and you haven't made any sold any records so of course that the, the, the budget will be limited on, on, on what they're going to spend for you well see we were um we had what you call per diem they would give us like maybe 75 dollars a day to eat and stuff and we were kids we was like 75 dollars a day this is pretty cool. <laughs> i'm only gonna spend 10 dollars on food so <laughs> But I, I never, not at that time, because it, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing the interviews. It was tiring. You yeah. know, you got tired. I mean, anybody would get burnt out, but it was still a lot of fun. You know, the fact that people wanted to know anything about you is attractive. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's appealing. So um, it, it was fun. I had a good time. And we had some amazing reps at RCA. Like, we had some really good people that work for the record company, you know, um, like Mary Moore, rest in peace. She was so amazing. She was our publicist. And, you know, we had some really pretty dope people that worked the record. And um, we actually was able to see them work the record. Like we had to literally go to the radio stations. Yeah, okay, back in those days. 
to really do the work, you know. And a lot of these artists are not built for that today. Yeah, no, it's it's a lot different. I didn't realize that right um, right here um, was your first single, because um, by the time you guys came out, I, I just I went to college in Alabama and then moved to the UK for about a couple of months before moving back to 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 Wisconsin. And but I'm so into you was the one that sort of was on the radio, especially the remix. But mm -hmm. when you guys were recording the, your first album, did you did you think about the, who was out and think, OK, because as I said, back then you had a lot of New Jack, you know, the good girls, um, um, the girls. Um, then you had in Vogue doing what, what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm trying to think who else might have been out when you guys, just before you guys came out as a group. There was a group called Ex-Girlfriend. Ex-Girlfriend, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a few of them. Um, a Brownstone was out. Not, you had, not as no. early as you guys. They came oh, out. Right. Right, right, right. But Ex-Girlfriend definitely yeah. was out because we have made this. <laughs> <laughs> And tell you this, this gotta, this gotta wait for the bio. Ah. <laughs> but then there was another girl group that was on Uptown called the Girls. Yeah, the Girls. Yeah, we know them. I'll be sure it was. Yeah. <laughs> My guy, like we thought they were just super dope. You know. Wow. You know, Tammy was actually supposed to be in. Um, uh, I think the Girls. Tammy Lucas. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she was. She was supposed to be in it, uh, but I think she read the contract. <laughs> And she said, no, I'm not, not, you're not going to get me that way. So she stuck to being a writer. <laughs> well, good, good job. <laughs> but so, you, you know, and, and I've, I've spoken at length with, with Brian and he talked about, you know, how the, the music and everything. But when you guys were recording um, some of the songs, did you notice that, oh, OK, this sounds good. It sounds different than what was on the radio and that we could actually, you know, make it make a dent or did you just what was it like well first of all um i think every song when you you already know what song you're going to call it when you hear it when brian's songs were brought to us it was just like magic one thing you cannot take from that brother <laughs> is that Yo, <laughs> Brian is talented. And back then, I think he was doing a lot of club stuff and um, house music because he loves house music. Like he's a <laughs> connoisseur. And to see how he can do a house track and, and then transition into like this deep R&B stuff, I was like, wow. You know, because usually producers are just one way. Yeah. They can at this and that's it but I mean when we heard Brian's stuff it was just like a no-brainer it, it was magic I mean you can pretty much see mm. <laughs> but know? how how much and I and I don't know when you guys before you got signed with RCA did you guys went to perform was it always Cheryl singing lead and and, and the rest of you um, doing the background or did you guys mix around in, in, with different songs prior to being signed? Well, no, it, it wasn't like that. It was like that when we finally got the deal. Like, and even like demo wise, we were all just kind of collaborate. But Jodeci was out. Okay, yeah, yeah. Jodeci was out. And it was just a lot of dope singers. Guy was hot. Yeah. And everybody was, everybody was singing like with that churchy sound. Yeah. So it just made sense. It just made sense. It didn't help us any, but I mean, <laughs> it did, but I'm just saying like, you know, for people to walk around and think you just have no talent or whatever, that's like a bad feeling, but you know, it worked. It was it was how it was supposed to be at the time, and that was that. Yeah, I can't really. I mean, I can't answer it from a, pro a producer standpoint or the record label standpoint. 
but I can tell you um, from my perspective. Yeah, as I said, I've um, I, I don't I've always had um, reservations with intro, and, and I love body and, and intro. Um, um, same thing with cut close, even um, not guy because they did mix it around a little bit. Teddy and Aaron would, would share stuff, but I my worry and fear was always if the lead singer you know loses the voice or you know like tony in high five it makes everyone else vulnerable and but then i and i do but i do wonder though in those early days is that if they just said yep we just want to have Cheryl sing and stuff they're like wow we're just in the studio do you in those the first album i'm thinking do you then question or you're just like wow we're just in recording studio and it doesn't even you don't consider think about it I don't even think they was thinking that far ahead because record companies don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They don't care how something makes you feel. They don't care about your emotions. They don't care about how people are going to look at you or how, you know, their decision is going to affect the brand as a whole. They don't care. They just about making a record and making it great and making money. That's yeah. what it was no one gives a damn about you. Hmm. No. But how do how was it for you? Because I think a lot of it is, the, you know, when we're reflecting, is I, I have no idea what it what it'd be like for yourself then, because we all know that you guys are all individual singers, so you wouldn't just just be the mm -hmm. background singer. But what was it like? How did you manage? How did you balance and not actually you? Think Cheryl was the vil the the villain. You know, make her the villain. How how did you manage that? Especially being young. No, oh, I didn't think she was the villain. Why why you say that? No 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 no. I'm gonna say, you know how it is when if 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 someone gets the spotlight and I, as I said, I'm how it can be easy. This is what I think. I think it de it determines how bad you want. You gotta figure out when you're in a situation. And you come in as a team, you have to figure out what is it that you want to get out of this. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it was never about spotlight. It was never about I want to be the famous one. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to do something that worked for the three of us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's not and it's not even about that with me now. Like I'm barely on social media. I barely know how to work an iPhone. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not about that for me. I'm not out there, you know, taking bikini pics and photos all over the place. I don't care. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's about for me today. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But, um, you know, the sad part about it is that the audience, they, they gain a perception of who they think you are based on what we show them. And that's been a story, you know? So it's too late to change it now. Yeah. <laughs> no, but then, because we, if... Um... Because I, as I said, it's I used my favorite show used to be behind the music on VH1, and and a lot of times um, bands, especially rock bands, would break up because the lead the lead singer probably wrote all the songs and and or, or something like that or spotlight. But um, it's important to hear that you know back in those days, I guess you guys saw the bigger picture, and 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 knew that you know being one despite everything was probably the best way to succeed i will say this you cannot help when you're amazing okay i knew she was amazing that's why i called her so when you it's just when you get in this business mm. people out of so these seas of discord yeah. and try to make it seem like it's something that is really not you know what I mean? Yeah. I will put Miss Cheryl Elizabeth Gamble next to the best of them. Okay. It is almost 30 years later. And I still feel that way. Mm -hmm. What she presented, what she gave was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I still do things that's amazing. I just wanted an opportunity to be amazing. Mm. You understand? 
Yeah. But no one nurtured my amazing. No one nurtured my gift. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you start to doubt yourself. You start to something that you've been doing forever that you've always been confident doing. You all, all of a sudden come into this space where no one even cares. Mm -hmm. So you grow up and you realize that you can't always wait for people to tell you that you're amazing. You have to feel it. You have to believe it. You know, and today, nobody can tell me shit. Mm. I am fucking amazing. Mm. Period. Mm. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching.